video right up. I think we're live. Welcome back, my friends, to the next edition of Monday Night Live. <clears throat> I'll be doing most of the talking tonight. Nisha has a mild case of laryngitis. She has the cutest Kim Carnes voice. So she's here tonight mainly so we can just admire this glorious head of hair. Look at this. Look at this hair. No extensions in this. There's a little tangle. Though. One little tangle. Welcome, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, where are you watching from right now? What city? What state? What country? This public. Um, I think. I think I made it public. Is it public? Are you sure? I mean, I think so. Why? You can't find it? Well, it's usually. Oh, maybe it's just a slow knot. Could be a slow night. I don't know. People may be tired of my crap. All he ever does is run his mouth. Could be. That's what I do. So let's hear your voice. Let's hear it. You'll hear it eventually. <laughs> Sound like she's going through puberty. Serena said it's profit. Is it? <laughs> well, I didn't share it anywhere else. I don't know how. Let me. Can you see maybe, if you can fix maybe. it? Maybe. Anyway, if Feel free, because we're going to talk about some important stuff tonight, no, I promise. Uh, feel free to share this on your so favorite social media, please. Do that. That helps us reach new people who are suffering because they don't know these simple truths of a proper human diet. Eat a proper human diet for a few years, and you too can have hair like that. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Depending on your genetics. We got people from France from Texas, from Florida, Trinidad. Oregon, UK, Indiana, Texas, California, South Carolina, Argentina. Nice. I want to go to Argentina bad. Earl's in the Philippines. Hey, Earl. Don't eat those peas, brother. Diana says, it's so hard to just eat only meat. How do you do it? You don't have to do carnivore. You don't have to do carnivore. Some of us need carnivore. Temporarily, some of us seemingly need it permanently, but you don't have to do that forever. You can just eat a very low carb ketogenic diet. I've got hundreds of videos on this channel about how to do that. It's delicious. It's very nutritious. Um, I would love it if all you guys at some point did a 90 day carnivore challenge, a 90 day beef, butter, bacon and eggs challenge, just so that to use it as an elimination diet like Nisha talks about. Um at our upcoming PhD summit in Nashville, that's the topic of her presentation is using 90 days of carnivore or beef, butter, bacon, and eggs as, a, as an elimination. And I think that's a great way to do it. Then you can add back in foods one at a time and see if you have a reaction to it. Some people enjoy staying meat mm -hmm. only. But yeah, yeah. Many of you might be surprised. I don't only eat meat. I eat mostly meat. Yeah, and I eat 99% meat. Do you want to... Pull them up over there and me read them, or yeah, I'll be reading the questions option. tonight because laryngitis. Uh, Jack, J Jackie, I was regifted a PhD ticket from Two Crazy Ketos. Is there a schedule? I didn't see one on the website. I'm trying to figure out last minute logistics for a five and a half car ride. Wow! So it's on Saturday. It starts at nine. Doors open at eight. And we go till five. The VIP cocktail hour will follow the summit. And then we'll flip the room and bring you back in for the sit down dinner. So if you have a VIP ticket, you're going to be there from nine to 8 p.m. So yes. try to get there <clears throat> around eight. Uh, but 8 30 is fine. But everything's going to kick off at nine o'clock on the dot. Yes. And I can't wait to meet all you guys and get a hug and take an ussy. It's going to be, I think it's going to be pretty cool. And if you're, did you mention the virtual, if, if you're unable right. to attend Keto Chow on their YouTube channel, they will be hosting all the videos for you to watch in case you can't make it for the low, low price of free 99 free F R E E all caps, bold, underlined. no, Weird stuff. It is just literally, you just yep. go watch it. So go ahead and subscribe to Keto Chow's YouTube channel now and turn on notifications. That way, when, when that goes live, you'll get a <laughs> notification and you won't miss a single lecture. Uh, the Duke. Hey, the Duke. 
My total cholesterol is 272, LDL 196. My HDL is 58, very good. Triglyceride 74, beautiful. My doctor wants me to perform a CAC scan. Yeah, I think you should do that. I've heard you say that triglyceride numbers are the important ones. Yes, I think I think that your HDL and triglycerides are beautiful. Uh, I don't think that your high LDL and high total cholesterol puts you at any increased risk of heart attack whatsoever. If your A1C, C-peptide, and fasting insulin are also normal. But I do recommend that everybody over the age of 40 get a CAC score or a CAC scan. And I've got a video on this channel explaining if you're like, what's a CAC score? Just go to my YouTube channel and search CAC and you'll find it. I explain it in detail, what it's about, how what it consists of, how much it costs, usually under $200. Uh, you also, in bigger cities, you don't even need an order from your doctor. You can just go to an imaging center and get it done. They'll take care of that for you if your doctor is going to be a butt and not order it. But uh, I think every adult human over the age of 40 should have a CAC scan just to see so if, if nothing else, you've got a baseline. Uh, does Nisha have a recipe for beef heart? So what we've done in the past is just put it in with our <clears throat> ground meat, but you can just slice it up and, and fry it in a skillet like steak. Yeah, I've sliced it up into like chicken strip slivers and fried it on low heat in butter with some garlic salt. Oh man. Um, <clears throat> beef heart, sheep heart, goat heart, any heart, chicken heart is not like liver. It does not have that coppery livery taste. It just tastes like muscle and it's full of coenzyme Q10 and many other vitamins and minerals. Uh, I think that, um, I think you'll enjoy it if you try it. But uh, a lot of times we'll just grind the heart and liver in with our ground beef and can't even taste it. Paul. Hey, Paul Wagner. Uh, May of 22, my A1C was 11, fasting glucose 2810. Maybe you meant 281. Started uh, the process. And then in September of 22, my A1C is 5.9. So his A1C went from 11 to 5.9. That's the power of a proper human diet, guys. This is not a joke. This is me, not me trying to sell you something. I do have things for sale, but you may have noticed I, I uh, try to sell things very passively. I'm not always in your face like, hey, 10% off. I don't do that because I'm not trying to become a millionaire. I'm just trying to help a million people optimize their health. Thank you, CS Studio. G.W. Stanley. G.W. I heard a physician say that you can only absorb approximately 30 to 32 grams of protein at a time. Is this true? No, it's not true. Uh, there are carnivores out there who have been eating two to four pounds of meat once a day for years. And if they were if they were wasting all that protein uh, and only getting 35 grams of protein per day, because that's all you can absorb from that one meal, they would be emaciated. They would be sick. Their skin would be literally falling apart. Their bones would be breaking. Their muscles would be non-existent. Uh, this, is, this is based on some old research. And you'll often hear that number. Oh, you can only absorb 35 grams of protein in one, any one meal, no matter how much you eat. That's obviously been proven just at, practically to not be true. Tia. Tia. Hey, Tia. I feel like the carnivore has made me extremely sensitive. I'll get constant headaches if I eat anything besides beef and eggs. Is that normal? So it has not made you more sensitive, Tia. What the carnivore diet has done is made you, it has calmed down the inflammation in your body, calmed down the, the disease processes in your body. And so now you can actually hear your body's feedback. This is very common for people who, after a few months of keto, ketovore, carnivore, when they do eat some stupid shit that they shouldn't eat, their body gives them immediate feedback. Now, your body was giving you that feedback back when you were eating Kellogg's and Pringles and Doritos and Ding Dongs, but your body was so inflamed and so metabolically sick, you couldn't hear the feedback. But now your immune system's calmed down, your inflammatory markers are better, and you can actually hear that feedback from your body saying, hey, dummy, don't, don't eat that, okay? Thank you. No, Scott, kiwi is not essential for gut health. <laughs> Angelic annihilator. But it has to be organic, non-GMO kiwis picked on the mountains of New Zealand. <laughs> that, that, now, those will, they do that. No, they don't do that either. They're that just, doesn't really make sense. If it was 
essential, then only a few areas of the earth would yeah, be able to only, have only, good health. Yeah, people where kiwis grow would have yeah. good gut health. That makes no sense. Uh, Angelic Annihilator, I hate cooking and meal planning. Same. 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 We hate that. Uh, but I need to gain weight and muscle. <clears throat> How can I get a lot of calories quick and easily eat a stick of raw butter? So, uh, Angelic Annihilator, good luck. Uh, eating a stick of butter to gain weight. Uh, that's not going to work. And in fact, I would actually bet you a hundred bucks that you could eat five or 10 sticks of butter a day in addition to your normal keto, ketovore, carnivore foods, and you won't gain an ounce. It has nothing to do with calories. If you want to gain fat, you're going to increase the amount of carbohydrates you're eating. It's that simple. Uh, the more processed they are, the, the more added sugar there are, the more weight, more fat you'll gain. If, however, you'd like to gain muscle and bone as, as weight on the scale, then you're going to start lifting heavy things while continuing to eat lots of healthy animal fat and animal protein. Michael, Dr. Barry, how are your abs? Can I get a six-pack abs without exercising just by diet down 30 pounds in five months? Yeah. First of all, uh, the full abdominal musculature is actually an eight-pack, but most of the time you can't see the, the bottom two. That's really, really hard to get that low of a body fat percentage. But many, many people get six packs of abs with carnivore without really working out at all. Because what people don't understand is the muscles are there right now. Even if you've got a beer belly that's like this, that you can like set your beer on, you still have six pack abs. They're just hidden. And so when you eat a very, very low carbohydrate diet and lots of healthy fat and lots of healthy protein, the fat starts to melt away. Actually, you breathe it out. You don't burn it off. You breathe it out. And that's that's called physiology and metabolism. Um, everybody's always surprised when I say that. That's where fat goes when you get rid of it. You breathe it out. So, yes, we've seen many people now. Currently, I'm sporting a four-pack. You can see the four, top four of my abdominal eight-pack. And that's just because I'm not really working out. I'm not. I, I work on the farm, but I'm not really trying to do – a thousand crunches and, and abdominal exercises. And so my abdominal muscles are very strong. Um, you can ask Nisha when we wrestle in horseplay. She, she can tell you. I can take her down. It's not even not even a challenge. I'm leaving. <laughs> but you've got the six pack. You've just got to uncover it. It's currently veiled with fat. <clears throat> I know a guy in high school that we used to say, I don't have a six pack. I have a keg. I knew a guy in high school just like that. Dennis, thank you for the super chat. What are you drinking this evening? I'm drinking iced tea. Unsweet tea with a squeeze of lemon. I got Redmond's Relight because I was out working on the farm earlier. I'm rehydrating, which doesn't mean drinking lots of water. It means getting some water with electrolytes. Uh, do you eat one, two, or three meals <clears throat> a day on carnivore? I eat 1.5 meals a day on average. So some days I'll eat one big meal. Um, I broke my fast about 5 p.m. today with two pounds of beef and a, what was that, a pound of ground, ground lamb? lamb? Yeah. Yeah. So three pounds of, of uh, two pounds of ground beef, one pound of ground lamb mixed together with some garlic salt. And what else do you put on there? Just some little spices. Yes. Garlic salt, pepper. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, yeah. And now it depends. I'm going to let my hunger be my guide. Cumin. If, awesome cumin. Yeah. But for that's for my antioxidant. No, it's because I like it's the taste. Good. It tastes good. Yeah. Uh, but I may eat a second time this evening or I may not. It, just, it totally depends on my hunger. If my hunger says, hey, you're hungry, I'll eat. If I'm if I don't think about it, I'm not hungry. I won't eat again tonight. And that's that's what many, many people find themselves doing. They don't force themselves to do it on carnival. It just tends to happen because you're not constantly hungry because you're eating a high-carb diet. Thank you, Holly Crisey. Good to see you here. Uh, not, not two, two teas. teas. Oh, I get it. Wink, wink. Uh, I've been on beef, butter, bacon, and eggs and asking, can I drink your recipe for electrolytes a pint a day on beef, butter, bacon, and eggs? Yeah. Yeah. That's on your channel or my channel? That's on mine. Yeah. On Nisha's channel, we have <laughs> a go. recipe can for- Can we please redo no, it? No. For ketoate which is basically an electrolyte-rich uh, drink. Now, it's got a little squeeze of lemon and some electrolytes, and we talk about several different ways you can make that, and so a little splash of apple cider vinegar because it's magical. No, because it, it makes it have a nice taste. That's why. 
And so uh, go to Nisha. If you just type Nisha, N-E-I-S-H-A, into YouTube, she is the very first person to pop up. She's like uh, Raven now. She just goes by her first name. She doesn't even need her last name. That's so Nisha. Wow, Nisha. I cannot see right now. <laughs> uh, Raina, should I eat lots of butter to increase my fat while trying to lose another 50 pounds? I already lost 40 doing ketovore and reverse my type 2 so, diabetes. Go, you wanna, yeah, go ahead. I saw another comment that was like, are you following the 80, 20, 80% fat, 20% protein? Is this not how keto was started? Yeah. That is just keto. This is yeah. not anything new. This is so frustrating when I yeah. see this. It's like, that's keto. Yeah. <laughs> you can, you can do that. High fat. That for some people, higher fat like that. And it works. For accelerates a lot of the weight yeah. loss. Accelerates the the metab metabolization of your stored fat, which is what you're trying to do. You're not burning it off because it's not. We don't talk about calories. You're metabolizing that fat and you'll breathe it out. Uh, some people seem to do better, and it seems to be the minority on a higher protein, adequate fat. It's diet. like it's a keto carnivore. Like yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's just everybody's ping ponging off of stuff, and it's super yeah. confusing for so many people. It just depends. Try yeah. it. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you need to have a one-to-one -one fat to protein, or mm -hmm. maybe you need a little higher protein mm -hmm. and moderate amount of fat. It It's not one size fits all. Try it. Mm -hmm. If you like it, continue. If you see results, <clears throat> continue. If you don't, change it up. Just keep in mind, the human body uses fat in your diet to build things with, okay? Your hormones, your myelin sheaths, your cell membranes, all these things are made of fat. A lot of people out there, especially people espousing a high protein, uh, moderate fat, they think that fat's just fuel. You don't use it for anything. You just burn it. This is 100% false. We use fat to make hundreds of things in our body. And, and, if, and we will store some fat up to a certain percentage. But if you're eating a very, very low carbohydrate diet, your body's just not going to, the hormones aren't going to be tweaked to the fat storage place. You're going to store a healthy amount of fat, which for a man is somewhere between 10 and 20% body fat. For a woman is somewhere between 15 and 25% body fat. Then you'll stop storing fat because your body doesn't need any more. My whole presentation on Saturday, if you're going to be there, awesome. If not, it's going to be streamed live is called how to find your proper human diet. And I go through all the things yep. because you can follow, uh, there's so many voices, but if you don't know how to do it your the way that suits your body, then it is very confusing. And which expert should you listen to? And the whole point is the expert you should listen to is your body. And so I basically teach you how to listen to your body and do N equals one experiments. So if you want to listen to that, that will be Saturday, yeah. <laughs> you know, as long as I can speak. <laughs> David says, uh, do you offer online consults? I do not currently offer that, but you can directly ask me questions on my Patreon. There's a link down in the show notes. You can become a patron and support the work that Nisha and I do trying to bring good health to the entire world. Perhaps the entire universe, should there be life out there. But you can ask me questions directly on Patreon. Sean, I know sign of insulin resistance, but how do you know when you become insulin sensitive again? And this is the problem with talking about insulin resistance. And you'll hear a lot of gurus out there talking about it. But there, what does that mean? That That's basically a concept. It's not a medical diagnosis. And, and there's no one test that you can check to show here's your level of insulin resistance. So what I like to talk about instead is hyperinsulinemia. Are you still hyperinsulinemic? The way you know that is to check an A1C, a lipid panel, a C-peptide, and a fasting insulin. If your A1C, your fasting insulin, your C-peptide, your triglycerides, and your HDL are all normal, you are insulin sensitive, my friend, by definition. That's why I'm always talking about labs. Labs are very important, especially if you're currently metabolically ill with metabolic syndrome, hypertension, prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, fatty liver, you need to know your labs. And that's why it's because once you've corrected the hyperinsulinemia, guess what? You're healthy. You're welcome. Ashley. Thank you, Ashley. Number one fan. Jess. Jess says, high fat ketovore off all meds for severe anxiety and panic disorder for 43 days. I have my life back after 10 years. Thank you down to pre-pregnancy weight. 
Awesome, girl. I mean, good job. Thumbs up for Jess. Jess, well done. Uh, it's got to be a different world now, Jess, is it? It's got to be just like, wow, I actually enjoy life again. That's so awesome. And I bet you don't feel restricted. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you weren't restricted mm -hmm. by your anxiety, but now you're restricted by your diet. No. Right. Yeah. Good, Good job. job. Well, well done. done. Well done. Huzzah. <laughs> Alberta. Alberta. Hey, Doc, I'm a firefighter and I've lost a ton of weight with keto and OMAD. Alcohol and cigarette free for two years. You're going to live a long damn time. I'd like to try the carnivore diet, but worried about spiking cholesterol and fiber. So, okay, first of all, there is no, fiber is not an essential nutrient. There is no minimum uh, recommended daily intake, okay? If you never ate another gram of fiber for the rest of your life, you'll be fine. Uh, the secondly, what would they, spike in their cholesterol? Is that what they were worried about? And spiking cholesterol and yeah. not getting fiber. So I've got many videos on this channel that explain to you why having a high total cholesterol is not anything to worry about. And why having a high LDL cholesterol is also uh, probably nothing to worry about or something to worry about a tiny, tiny amount, okay? Um, correcting your metabolic disease is hundreds of times more beneficial than correcting your LDL cholesterol. Don't worry about it. Just eat your meat. Future Breeze. Follow up from Patreon question, RE hair loss, thyroid panel was normal, 61 years old, 25 plus years of Graves disease, may uh, extra iodine help. 10 uh, months carnivore, hair loss is new and massive. So yeah, the iodine may help. Anytime you've had thyroid, uh, hyper, hyperthyroidism or Graves disease, that's a known autoimmune condition. It's quite possible that you have a second autoimmune condition that your doctor hasn't yet diagnosed. Many of the autoimmune conditions can lead to significant hair loss. Uh, if you've been un under a time of severe stress, that can also cause hair loss. If you've lost a massive amount of weight, that can also contribute to hair loss. I've got a video on this channel about hair loss that explains all the reasons why you might be losing hair. And when I say losing hair, I don't mean losing it in patches. I mean, losing it diffusely over your entire head. Make sure you're eating enough, too. Makes Making me look at my hair now. No, it's still there. Okay. It's still there. Still there. <clears throat> si that, oh. Oh, I love Where did it go? Size matters. Hang on. Size matters. But well, you got to be joking me. Did it click completely off? Sorry, size matters. Dang it's it. It's not my fault. Is it really gone? Thank you, Diana. Chris, my blood pressure is 136 over 96. I don't want to go on blood pressure meds. Can I lower it with a keto, keto or carnivore? I'm 34 year old male, 175 pounds, five foot seven. Yeah, Chris, talk to your doctor and just say, look, I'm going to try this diet for 90 days. I'm going to buy a blood pressure cuff that checks up here, not on the wrist. And I'm going to check my blood pressure twice a day when I'm calm, chill and relaxed for 15 minutes and then I'll check my blood pressure. I'm going to write those down twice a day and I'll let you, and I'll send them to you. Okay. I'll email them to you. And then if my blood pressure is not trending down on this, this new crazy fad diet, keto or carnivore, then I will consider taking a low dose of the blood pressure medicine after a 90 day trial of carnivore. But I think that you'll find as will your doctor that you don't need a blood pressure pill. Katie, can keto help autoimmune diseases such as Hashimoto's? I was diagnosed a few weeks ago and asked about keto, and they told me not to do it because my cholesterol is high. Can you take this? I have Hashimoto's. I've had it for eight years now, and it has been in remission for three years because of keto and carnivore, and now ketovore because I have eliminated everything but me. And now I know exactly what triggers my Hashimoto's to flare up. So yes, it absolutely can help and does help many. There are so many now that talk about this. There's uh, Caitlin Weeks has Hashimoto's. She is carnivore. Me, uh, many others. Also, if you have Hashimoto's in the chat, type in your experience. As absolutely. Well. Thank you, Roy. Thank you, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Uh, Daniel says, dealing with acute pancreatitis, how do I follow this way of eating and handle this issue? You lost a lot of weight with this way of eating and have been told to go low fat. So the pancreas uh, doesn't have anything to do with digesting fat. Uh, your gallbladder and your bile take care of that. Uh, 
pancreatitis was probably caused by something else. It definitely wasn't caused from eating a proper human diet. If you want to stay keto, even 50 total grams a day keto full of uh, vegetables and some berries and some nuts, I think that's totally fine. Uh, but if you wanted to go 100% full bore red meat carnivore, that's not going to cause you to have pancreatitis. It, the physiology doesn't work that way. Terry. <clears throat> Terry says, I'm down 161 pounds. Nine more to go until goal. Two years carnivore, one and a half years keto, so close to only being overweight on a BMI scale. I'm five foot four and 168 pounds. Terry, Good job. 161 pounds. I want everybody to type in the comments how many pounds you've lost on keto or ketovore or carnivore uh, total. I want to see what the highest number is. Let's see what that turns out to be. Deborah, how do I deal with backlash from people for feeding my baby a proper human diet? I'm worried about being accused of abuse. Yeah. So, um, well, I would say, does my child look malnourished? Uh -huh. Is my child not, are they not able to speak appropriately and do things that their age yeah. should appropriately do? Are right. they happy? Do they play? Yeah. Okay. So if none of those are problems for your child, which I'm sure they're not, if you're feeding them whole foods, meat, meat and, and vegetables veg, and berries. some berries and cheese. And some nuts. Yeah. That then sounds... let them report you because they're... Yeah, they're going to be the DHS or whatever it's called is going to be mad that they have had. To yeah. Waste their what money. kind of world do we live in where parents are literally afraid of law enforcement if they feed their child a proper human diet? What kind of world is that? That, that this parent, that Deborah even has to deal with that, that she's got a, an in-law or a neighbor or a family friend who is so ill-informed and so unhappy with their own life that they would literally potentially report her for abusing her child by feeding her child what human beings have eaten for the last two and one half million years. What kind of world is that? Like because your kid doesn't eat goldfish? Yeah, so, right. So right. I'll tell you who's going to report you to DCS, and that's the Gerber uh, public relations because you're hurting the profits. You're not buying enough right. little snack crackers and little... Uh, you know, the cute Gerber baby stuff. So yeah, this, this, what kind of world is this? Come on, come on people. Uh, but good for you, Deborah. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, strong. if that were us, we would pray. Yeah. We would pray that Please somebody reported us to DCS because we were feeding back at meat, mainly meat and a little bit of veg and a few nuts. Please report me to DCS for that. They'd just be like, this kid is, uh, yeah, yeah. Highly he's two and a half years old and he's in kindergarten. Yeah, he's really abused. Karen, thank you. Um, Harry, Harry Slater. If you need to add fat, is olive oil okay? Sometimes do not want butter. So if it's real olive oil, Harry, and currently with many brands, there's a problem with them adulterating the olive oil with canola oil or soybean oil because it's really hard for the consumer unless you grew up in Italy to be able to tell the difference between real 100% olive oil and so buy a really good quality brand, buy extra virgin, and hopefully and hope for the best. But don't forget about beef tallow and bacon grease because they're also delicious and they're full of good healthy fat. Matless. Matless. Not saying it is connected, but I have seen more back acne in the past four to five months. What can I do? Uh, I don't know your gender, Matless, your sex. But um, sometimes for some people, when your testosterone level rises quite a bit, you can have some back pain. And very many people on, on ketovore or carnivore notice that their testosterone level just naturally goes back up to the upper limits of normal uh, for both men and women because testosterone is important for both. Well, Thank you, Daniel. Karen. Karen, how to deal with leg and feet cramps I've had them for 13 weeks. Karen, you've come to the right place. I've got a YouTube video on this very channel all about leg cramps and all the things that can cause it and all the things you can do about it. So just go to YouTube and type in Dr. Barry leg cramps and you'll have it. You'll have all the information. But in a nutshell, you're probably not getting enough potassium, magnesium, or salt. 
and you may be drinking too much water. If you're one of those people that think they need to drink their body weight in ounces of water a day, you're drinking too much water, and that can actually cause leg cramps and can also cause kidney damage. I'm working on a video about that right now. What did you say? Panda massaged? Panda massaged. Get it? Panda massaged me. That's your handle? <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. A great man once said, no. Uh, once you have a heart attack, are statins and baby aspirin useful? I have three stents now. Docs are screaming. I have to take them or my stents will fill up. So, no, there, there's no research that, that, that meaningfully shows that taking a statin will keep your stents from filling up. Uh, but if anybody needs a low dose of a statin and a baby aspirin two or three days out of the week, it would be somebody who's had a heart attack. That, that's really the only subclass of people who might benefit from taking a low dose of a statin. That's what the current research shows. Hey, thank you, Steve. Jackson, thank you, Steph, Steph P. Yeah. Got He's, that one. Uh, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, uh, Matlas says, uh, back acne, black male, 50 years old, increased back acne. Yeah. Uh, I, I would guess it's from your increased testosterone, just like when we were teenagers and the testosterone hits and you start getting back acne and facial acne, this is going to be short-lived because you're also not doing all the things to muck up your hormones. You uh, Get some sun on your back 10 to 30 minutes a day and keep eating a proper human diet, and this will be gone in a few weeks. Seven? Seven young. Girlfriend has severe fatigue constantly. Got blood work, no vitamin, vitamin deficiency, yeah. but high cortisol and high testosterone on birth control, low LH uh, and low FSH, high sex hormone binding globulin. So more and more uh, doctors who are really looking at metabolic health are noticing that uh, elevated sex hormone binding globulin is a marker for hyperinsulinemia. So she needs to get those labs that I talk about in all my videos checked. I guarantee you her fasting insulin and sleep peptide are high. Uh, and then she's probably also eating a lot of inflammatory foods, which when she cuts that out and gets the uh, fasting insulin back down to normal, the fatigue will get better and her sex hormone binding globulin will go back down to normal. Elon, fanboy, when can I quit keto one bottle down? Three weeks on a proper human diet, down 19 pounds, feel so much better. What do I need to watch out for in this stage? Where do people mess up? Thanks so much. You guys are awesome. Okay. You mean one bottle of ketones? What do you mean I one quit bottle keto, down? keto. One bottle when down. When can I quit keto? Ketones? So if you're taking oh. exogenous ketones, you can quit that right now because that's not that's not keto. That's I don't I'm not sure if that's what you meant or not. But if it is, exogenous ketones are a waste of your keto money. Chow. Oh, keto chow. Okay, so um, you can keep using keto chow occasionally in a pinch. Their shakes or their soups. But I don't think that's part of a proper human diet long term. Eventually, I want you eating lots of fatty meat, lots of eggs with the yolk, and maybe a few vegetables, a few berries, a few nuts, or maybe not. That's a proper human diet. But definitely, Keto Chow makes one of the cleanest um, shakes in the business. And that's why we work with them is because they don't make crap. Uh, but I don't think that drinking a Keto Chow shake every day or two or three times a day, that's not part of a proper human diet long term. Thank you, Viva Geste. Aurora. Aurora. Thank you for the super chat. Help, I am never hungry, but I do feel like snacking on butter. It's hard to finish my meal, which is around 3 p.m. Half pound of ground beef and four eggs with butter. Is this normal? So you're getting a ton of nutrition in that uh, ground beef and the four eggs and the butter. So what I want you to do is eat a little more during that meal. Eat until you literally cannot put another bite in your mouth. And for some people, for the first few times I do that, they'll actually feel nauseous. And it's not because you've done anything wrong. It's because your body's not used to being comfortably stuffed. And then if you start to want to snack on something, go ahead and eat some more ground beef. Eat another egg or two. <clears throat> and you can have butter with it. That's for sure. But you want to, every time you put something in your mouth, you want it to be nutrient dense. That's what real food is. And that's what your human body's craving is nutrient dense foods. Butter's got a ton of healthy fat in it. It also has some vitamins and minerals in it, especially if it's grass fed butter. But I'd love it if you just scrambled an egg with really with lots of butter and ate that instead of just eating the butter. Thank you, Steve Jackson. 
Okay. Um, somebody said, can we meet two crazy ketos at the summit? You get to meet everybody. They're going to be there. Nurse Cindy's going to be there. Two crazy ketos. The beautiful Rachel and the so-so Joe. No, Joe's great. I love Joe. Autumn uh, Jones. Autumn Jones is going to be there. And I Kim, bet she'll bring her husband. Yeah, he can. Well, um, Kim Howerton. Kim Howerton's going to be there. You uh, can get an ussy with Kim Howerton. You Howerton's. can also see Robert and Crystal Sykes. Yeah, They're Keto Savage in the house. Uh, baby Savage with them. Yep. And our two friends from Nashville, I think, are going to come too. Well, Caitlin, Natasha can come, but I think Caitlin maybe. Caitlin, can come. Caitlin's yeah. going to be there. What's her handle? I forgot. Uh, Grassfed Girl. Grassfed Girl's going to yeah. be there. All these people are going to be there just so you can meet them and get an ussy. Ussy. Yes. Just... Steph P. I eat two meals a day, 16 ounces of beef each. I heard you, I heard you are three pounds during your meal. Yeah, three to four. Am I under eating? I, probably not, Steph. You probably are not as big as me. I'm six foot three and three quarters and currently weigh about 235. So I have I have a much bigger powerhouse to feed. Not that I am a powerhouse, but you know what I mean. Power plant. Power plant. Yeah. So <laughs> eat until you are comfortably stuffed. Eat until you get another bite of, of real proper human diet food and you're like, I can't, I can't, I cannot, I'm totally done. I'm this. done. That's when you stop eating. That's how you know you've eaten enough. It's like we're hardwired. When you're thirsty, you drink. When you're when when you're hypoxic, you breathe air. When you're hungry, you eat food. When so, you're tired, okay, okay, you sleep. Okay, okay, okay. When your bladder's full, do you, you want to get to these questions? Pee -pee. It's just it's just it's like we're made for this. Size matters. This is what I this is what I'm working with. Please put your question in the chat again. And the there it is right here. Is this it? Size matters. Okay, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Okay, size right. matters. We got it. Been carnivore for almost a year, started gym recently and started having heart palpitations. Professor Bart K suggests more protein will help the kidney stop flushing out electrolytes. What do you suggest? I don't, I don't disagree with uh, the right honorable Bart K. I would recommend really making sure you're getting enough salt and magnesium and potassium in your diet, either in the form of Redmond's uh, Relight, which has all four in it, sodium, chloride, potassium, and magnesium. Uh, or you can just add it to your food either way. But uh, I think any of those things are going to uh, help that. But if it continues, go see your doctor and get an EKG and perhaps more testing because it could be something completely unrelated to your diet. And that goes for everybody watching. Don't just automatically blame stuff on your diet unless you're eating a, a shitty standard American diet. Then you can blame everything on it. All right, Sherry, happy Monday, beautiful berries. Been tracking my CGM with Dexcom for the last week. Glucose on high-fat carnivore is around 120 to 130. Uh, lowers when I eat. Yep. What are your thoughts? This is a very common pattern, Sherry. Hi, Sherry, by the way, uh, for carnivores. And so what will happen is, is you'll do this, then when you eat, it'll come way down, 60, 70, 80. But when you get your A1C checked every three months, it's going to be 5.5 two, three, four, five, something like that. It's going to be beautiful. And that's how we know that this physiological uh, hyperglycemia, which technically, uh, you know, 125, that's hyperglycemia. But the physio, the when your liver does that on purpose, it doesn't seem to glycate our red blood cells and other cells and tissues as much as if you just eat too many carbs and that drives your blood sugar up to 125, that's going to glycate and that's going to show up on the A1C. Thanks, size matters. Brandon, six weeks ketobore, down 30 pounds. Tried stopping insulin to fast and had to go back on it. How is this? Uh, how will this affect intermittent fasting, hyperinsulinemia, and fasting insulin? Just don't worry about any of that, Brandon. Take your time, okay? You are on the right path. This is the way you have found a proper human diet. Give your body time. Make sure that you had a C peptide check to make sure that your pancreas still makes insulin. You can't check a fasting insulin in your case because you inject insulin. So that's going to mess up a fasting insulin test. So get the C peptide check to make sure you're still making insulin and you're not an LADA. Okay. But, Say what that means. So that, that just is an adult onset type 1 diabetes that happens later in life. Uh, but if you're still making insulin, you've just got to be patient. Give your body time to heal the metabolism, and you're you're on the way, my friend. You're on the way. Well done. Just Jason says, I'm finally learning what full is. Being comfortably stuffed helps so much. 
if you are prone to snacking. Yep. 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 So many people push the plate away after a certain portion, a certain helping, a certain amount. No, don't do that. If you're still hungry, go get some more food and eat it right then. Because the fewer meals you eat a day, that gives your body more hours in the day to bring that insulin back down to low normal. And that's where you burn fat. Uh, will the P uh, John, will the PhD raise your testosterone if it's really low? Thanks for all you do. Yeah. Now this doesn't seem to happen in everybody, but I've, I've got guys in my Patreon group. One guy, his testosterone, total testosterone was 400 and change. He started the beef, butter, bacon and eggs challenge. And after 90 days, his testosterone with no supplementation was 800 and change just from 90 days of beef, butter, bacon and eggs. So, but now some guys it'll go up 50 points, some guys 100, but his in that case went up 400 points. So it's pretty astounding that he got to do that by, while enjoying lots of fatty red meat. So Nisha on her channel's got a new vlog up and she's got a, she made some chicken thighs. Dude. They're so good. I don't often eat chicken, but when yeah. I do, it's her chicken. It's thighs. mostly beef and lamb in this house, but man, I mean, so really yeah, good. check out her latest vlog, vlog. If you still love chicken, uh, if you love chicken, eat chicken legs and chicken thighs. Don't eat that damn breast. Give that to the dogs. Uh, and then I've got a new video up on this channel about how to unclog your arteries. And now ignore the first minute of that video because I'm, I'm being sarcastic. But then the rest of the video is actually useful information. John said my chicken thighs and gave him gas. <laughs> Sorry, John. It's the garlic. <laughs> yeah, it's that bit of garlic well, you put it on. I put it on broccoli. So if you use the broccoli, yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. the broccoli. Broccoli. But you don't have to put it on broccoli. You can just bake them and season them. Um, <clears throat> there was one. I don't think we've done that one yet. Go back up. Yeah, right there. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, seven, seven Young. Thanks for the advice. What video can I watch about hyperinsulinemia? It's not hyperinsulin anemia. It's hyperinsulinemia. One All word. one word. Uh, and if you just go to YouTube and type in Dr. Berry, hyperinsulinemia, it'll, it'll pop them all up or just Dr. Berry insulin. And you guys can do that with any medical topic. You can type in Dr. Berry blood pressure, Dr. Berry diabetes, Dr. Berry fatty liver, Dr. Berry sleep apnea, Dr. Berry um, Boogers. booger. No, I don't, I don't have a booger video. You don't? You have a uh, poop video. It. I should do a video. You have a poop video. You what's should, the what's color? color my boogers? What does it mean? What does it mean if my boogers are what color? That would get a billion views and be totally unhelpful. Stupid. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Stupid. I may not do that. But what color is your poop is important. I got a video about that. Thank okay. you, the reader. Also, he said, um, I get nauseous after meat eating uh, at times. Do you have any of those? Many people, if they're not used to eating a meat heavy diet, the first few times they eat it, and sometimes for a few weeks, when they hit satiety, when the when the ghrelin and the leptin and the, the peptide YY and the neuropeptide Y, when they all go to the right spot, meaning you're full, dude, stop eating. Some people experience that for a few weeks as nausea because they're not used to having that much nutrient density in their guts all at one time. So give that time, that feeling of nausea will go away. Once your body's like, oh, we're we must, it must not be a famine anymore. Every time we eat, it's just like boom, all the nutrition. And then the nausea feeling will go away. Angela. Are you paying attention? Yes, I am. Angela says, why would alkaline phosphatase be low? So the vast majority of the time, if your alkaline phosphatase is low, it doesn't really mean anything. There's about three or four very rare metabolic conditions where it can mean something. Usually it just means that your liver is working very, very well. That's usually what it means. All of the labs are normal, actually golden including my urine. I have cerebral palsy and I'm 62 years old, have lost 85 pounds on keto. Here's somebody with cerebral palsy and they're like, just give me a proper human diet and I will heal my metabolism. Huzzah. Love it. Huzzah. Uh, two crazy ketos has a super chat we missed. My question oh, concerned eating from char Evan. charred meat and if that's inherently bad, there's conflicting data, but haven't our ancestors been doing that? 100%. Yeah. If any of you guys have actually ever tried to cook meat over an open flame and human beings have been cooking for well over a million years, but you can imagine the first few hundred thousand of those years, we didn't have crock pots. We didn't have skillets. 
And so until we were able to learn how to make pottery and stuff like that, we were we would stick meat on a stick and hold it over the fire. That's how we cooked it. Now, if you've ever tried to do that, you know it is impossible not to char the meat. And so this is one of those things where you are you have to think about the ancestral appropriate to this. So we've been eating charred meat for over a million years, at least one million years, if not a little longer. But now it's magically we found out it's bad for us. You see how that's kind of like, what? And if you'll look at the studies where they show that, oh, charred meat might cause cancer or something, they're observational studies. They don't prove causation. They're not control studies. And so they don't really show anything except a possible slight association. That's all they show. I'm going to take a minute to thank our moderators. They do us a huge favor <clears throat> by being in the yes. chat section and helping answer some common questions for you guys. So please be kind to them. Yes, they respectful. are there to help you. They're very knowledgeable at about a proper human diet. Yes, we love that they're here. So you should also enjoy the benefits of them being in the chat section. Okay? Yes, absolutely. I got one from three me. cheers for the moderators. Huzzah, huzzah, huzzah. Hip, hip, hooray. I love your Kim Carnes voice. <laughs> Emmy. Emmy, my doc recommended statins due to high LDL. My HDL is 90. Gorgeous. My triglycerides are 70. Booyah. High sensitivity CRP, 1.97. Good. LPA uh, 8.97. Your thoughts, please. So uh, did is your A1C normal? Is your C-peptide and fasting insulin normal? If they are normal, then you can tell your doctor, take this statin and shove it. I ain't taking it no more. Can you just done. answer questions? I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Lindsay with no D. Hey, Lindsay. Hashimoto's diagnosis a couple of years ago, but technically not hypothyroid yet. That's right. That this can happen. Sometimes you can actually be hyperthyroid with Hashimoto's initially. Had a baby eight months ago. TPO antibody and all other thyroid labs were great during the pregnancy. Now my antibodies are back up. This is also very common. This happens. Uh, a lot of things will go to normal while you're pregnant. And then as soon as the baby's out, they go haywire again. Uh, so I'm going to let Nisha take this one. Your TSH is 12.4, so you definitely need to be on some armor or some nature because I'm sure you have hypothyroid symptoms. If you're And so TSH is a pituitary hormone. TSH is not a thyroid hormone. TSH is your anterior pituitary yelling at your thyroid saying, hey, dummy, make some thyroid hormone. She's with this, so she's fine. <laughs> That's what TSH is. And so if yours is 12.4, you, you, you have hypothyroidism. You need to be taking either Armor or Nature or NP or WP, or if you're in Canada, ERFA, E-R-F-A. Yeah. I mean, you covered it. Yes, I did cover it, baby. Thank you for yes. acknowledging that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, man. You put... He put such a sweet comment on my latest video and someone was like, she's a B. <gasps> I feel sorry for you, man. Yeah. What? You didn't see that? No. <laughs> yes. I did not see that. Yeah. Uh, Ron Melrose. Ron says, one year ago was warned about fatty liver. So glad I came across a video about fatty liver from Dr. Barry, which made me jump into carnivore down about 50 pounds. Liver numbers are back to normal. My A1C is 5.0. That's how oh, simple God. it is. You don't have to do all the stuff. Just eat a proper human diet, people. Please do it for me, would you? Uh, thank you, the reader. Tedros. Tedros, should we be worried about iron overload on keto and carnivore? If you listen to plant-based doctors, <laughs> you definitely are worried about iron overload. Uh, a YouTuber called Frankie got iron overload five years plus on carnivore. Is this an issue? <sighs> No, it's not an issue. Human beings have been eating lots of fatty red meat for 3 million years. We're not going to get iron overload. Uh, and I'm not I would, laughing at you, Ted. I would not take any advice from anyone on YouTube named Frankie. I'm not going to get into it any more than that. He does not like him. Frankie doesn't like him. Yeah, just <laughs> trust me, Frankie. Um, just watch a few more of his videos and you'll kind of get a flavor for what's up with Frankie. 
Just believe. Just believe. I didn't realize I felt so bad until carnivore, and now I feel so much better. That's a big problem. People get used to how they feel, and you don't realize you feel like shit every day. Just try it. Just believe says just try carnivore. No nausea, no reflux issues. Thanks so much for sharing. Huzzah. That's it. Huzzah. Warren. Warren, ketovore for three weeks, but fatigued during exercise. I just want to, I just want to. Can we hold hands while we do the live? I like to, I like to do that. Do it this way. <laughs> Different size hands and different length arms. It makes it, we're like, she's like this, or I'm like this. Okay, I'm sorry, Warren. Uh, uh, but fatigue during exercise. Was a cross-country runner, but want to know if it's possible to perform as well on low carb. 100%. Uh, Professor Tim Noakes talks about this. He's actually writing a book about it. Our team would eat pasta the night before a big race. Uh, Professor Tim Noakes, who's a preeminent exercise physiologist and used to be a, a marathoner, he used to recommend that in his first book and he re completely retracted. He said, I was wrong about all that. And he wrote another book. So uh, yeah, you don't need the pasta before a race. Stop. I don't know what to do with my hands. No, what you can do with your hands. Well, well, it, dark Phoenix. Dark Phoenix. I feel like I should read it. Like that guy. Hey guys, been ketovore for two months. I have a keto chow shake and one other meal in the afternoon, only beef, butter, and or eggs. Check my ketone meter. It was 0.4 and I'm not losing weight. Any thoughts? I love Chris Bear and Miriam Bear. Bear, I love Miriam a lot more than Chris. That's who makes keto chow. Hey boy. But I think it's probably time to stop the keto chow shake and just eat more beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. That's what I think. Hey, Becky Berry's here. Wait. Becky Berry, Becky Berry. Come say hi, Beckett. But, but, well, I don't okay, want to do that. Okay. Thank you, to. Ron B. Uh, Holly Furtner, what is the difference between electrolytes and BHB salts? So BHB salts are exogenous ketones. They are not electrolytes, okay? The electrolytes are sodium, potassium, uh, magnesium, and uh, chloride, and uh, a little bit calcium. Those are the electrolytes. Uh, and then I think you should mind all your minerals, not just those five I just mentioned. But BHB salts are exogenous ketones, and you don't you don't need to waste your money on those. Good question. Let's go up, dude. I'm, I've, I've, I've already been right to the bottom. Here. Oh, sorry, Charlotte. I have ferritin in the 600s, which is actually down from in the 1000s. I do not have hereditary hereditary hemochromatosis. Would carnivore help? Yeah, 100. percent More and more, we're discovering that. Elevated ferritin is a marker of either inflammation or hyperinsulinemia, metabolic syndrome. And I think uh, 10 years from now, that'll be included along with the five current markers for metabolic syndrome is if you have a high ferritin level. But you already noticed by eating a PhD, it's coming down. When you go carnivore, it'll come down even more. It's, it has nothing to do with iron over. Right here. Right. Kenneth, thank you, Dr. Barry. And thank you, Nisha, for being so nice to Dr. Barry. Can you speak to candida overgrowth? I'm on a parasitic cleanse and I'm breaking out. Yeah, so parasitic cleanses are a uniform waste of money. Uh, the way you get rid of any parasites in your body, if you have parasites like worms, pinworms, ringworms, uh, not ringworms, uh, tapeworms, any of those worms, roundworms, longworms, shortworms. Do you have worms? No, I have one worm. Where's he at? He, he's right in the can that we killed him with. It has water in it and so he killed it. Gotcha. If you have worms, you need to go see your doctor and get a pill. It's a one pill. You take one time, it gets rid of all the worms in your body. Then you don't have any parasites. I doubt you have parasites anyway, but parasite cleanses are woo-woo. They don't really do anything. Probably the reason you're breaking out is because of the high carbohydrate content of the, the parasite cleanse, whatever the recipe they told you to make. Uh, candida overgrowth, when you lower your carbohydrates enough, all candida, whether it's vaginal, whether it's on your feet, whether it's under your arms, whether it's in your mouth, whether it's in your gut, it all goes away. Candida loves sugar. And when you stop eating sugar and, and starches and carbohydrates, candida goes away on its own. You don't have to do anything special for that. Yeah, Only candidas. if you have HIV or some other severe autoimmune disease that, that hampers your immune, immune, immune system's ability to fight, then you might have candida. Otherwise, you don't have candida. 
Thank you to Crazy Keto. Ruth Ma, my blood pressure is 145 over 81. Is that a problem? Am I stressed? You might be stressed. Do I have inflammation? You might have a little inflammation. How do I see for sure if I have a problem? So you go see your doctor and you get all the lab tests ordered that I talk about in all my videos on YouTube. Uh, I also have the full lab test on my Patreon. There's a link down in the show notes if you want to become a patron. Uh, but 145 over 81 is beautiful. That's fine. 145 is borderline getting high. I would recommend you buy a blood pressure cuff that checks up here, not down here, and check it twice a day only when you're calm, chill, and relaxed. So sit down, relax for 15 minutes, check your blood pressure, write it down. What it, and because no, no doctor cares about one blood pressure rating. We care about what's your blood pressure average. And the only way to get average is to check it twice a day for a week and then average those numbers up. And then next week, I want you to do that. And then next week when we do this live, I want you to tell me what your average blood pressure is. And then I'll tell you if you got a problem or not. Patty. Patty. My husband has prostate cancer and we are told it feeds on testosterone. Is PhD bad for him? <sighs> okay. If you don't know me, you, you don't know how sick I am of doctors saying stupid stuff crap like this. All cancer feeds on sugar. Sugar, sugar, sugar. What does cancer feed on? Sugar. Cancer does not feed on testosterone. Okay. This is a, this is, a, okay. So years ago, actually I've got the book up there somewhere. A, a preeminent Harvard urologist did a study with three people in it, two of which uh, had, had prostate cancer. And he said, Testosterone is like pouring gasoline on a fire when it comes to prostate cancer. He did not do any meaningful research. And, but since he was a prominent hall of uh, doctor, this became religion in the United States. It's based on nothing. Okay. Testosterone doesn't do anything to prostate cancer or any other kind of cancer. You want a, a good high normal testosterone, whether you have prostate cancer or not. Testosterone does hundreds of beneficial things in your body. It does not feed prostate cancer. That is a lie that doctors tell you. I wrote a book about it. You better do what you're told, Issa. <laughs> Ron, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Ron B. What else you got over there, woman? I think that's it. We ought to <sighs> shut her down. Lord have mercy. Guys, thanks so much for joining me. If you have a question that we didn't get to tonight, please become a patron. There's a link down in the show notes. It's a, you can, for five bucks a month, you get access to additional live Q and A's just like this. But instead of 3,300 people watching and asking questions, there's 200 people. So we are able to answer many more questions, much more thoroughly. We will be moving to Mighty Networks. That's right. But we'll keep all our patrons updated and, yeah. and, and we will, we will handhold them in the process, but you can go ahead and get started by becoming a patron. And then when we shift, we'll tell you how to do it. It's no big deal at all. But that's how you get answers to your questions directly. Probably be fully on Mighty Networks by November. So, yep. but yep. everyone already who is in the Patreon community, you will be getting a full update yep. tomorrow. Thank you, Nina Cooper, for the super chat. All right, guys, that's it. We're out of here. Please, if we talked about anything tonight that you think would help someone you know, share this video with them. Send it in an email, a text message, or just share it on your social media, and maybe they'll have the good sense to watch it. This is Dr. Ken and niece, nerd, niece, nerd, 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 Nurse Nisha with the, I was looking at your hair distracting me, with Nurse Nisha with the beautiful hair. And we will see you next Monday night at 7 p.m. unless you become well, a patron, and then we'll see you tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. I feel like something's coming up that's on a Monday. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, oh, we'll probably see you next week. Love you, mean it. <laughs>